It seems like it has been forever since we have done an episode of Can Yes Fix It. This is the series where you guys send in your broken parts, no matter what the problem is, and I take a look at it and see if I can get those used old PC parts to work again. Now, I do have to apologize straight away. You're probably like, Brian, there has not been a Can Yes Fix It episode in a very long time. And that's got to do with just me being in, ever since the end of 2020, I sort of went into this like world, my little vacuum, where I just honestly wanted time to go by as quick as possible until I could see my son again. If you guys didn't know, I do have a son. He lives in Japan and I haven't seen him for over two years. And it does start to weigh on you as time goes by and you've got no outlook and no news on when you can go and see him again, it does start to get you down a little bit. But if you guys follow me for a while, I always try to see the glass half full. And I think from now, my, my passion and motivation is definitely starting to pick up again because I think this year I will get a chance to finally see my son. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm not entirely sure what that's got to do with me not doing it as Can Yes Fix It episode in a while, but I think it's because I've just looked at the shelf and there's all this stuff there. And I'm like, I'll do that later. I'll get the used parts hunt done or I'll build a gaming PC. And I've just procrastinated, especially on this particular type of thing. Though that aside, let's get into the problems and read out the letters and see what we can fix. And the first one is the GTX 1070. So this is a letter from John and they say, hey Brian, hope you're doing well. No need to read this letter in a Can Yes Fix It episode. <laughs> We've come this far, we might as well just keep going. To be honest, I'm not certain how much of this stuff in the box you'll be able to use, but I had some odds and ends around that I was hoping might be able to assist you with some of the unusual jobs that come your way. If nothing else, hopefully the RAM can come in handy. The key piece I've sent along is a friend's Zotac 1070. This thing booted up all right once. I went ahead and restarted the PC and the picture never came back. The card is amazing condition and I double checked for any damaged shorts I could find and to be honest, I'm stumped. If you can get it working, please consider it a gift for all the amazing content you produce. P.S. If you run across a Galax GeForce RTX 3070 X Gamer white GPU on you, in your shopping around the Gold Coast, I would absolutely be willing to purchase it from you via PayPal if you'd consider posting it to me over in the US. Not sure why, but Galax doesn't appear to sell anything stateside and I absolutely have fallen in love with the design of that card and you've always had generally nice things to say about Galax's quality. Of course, if you don't have time, I understand, but if you do run across one, please let me know as I'd be more than happy to buy it from you. All the best and here's to a better 2021. <laughs> we should change that to 2022 as it's been a long time since I've done these episodes. So first of all, with Galax, they, they're weird in that even in Australia, they've had a lot less volume of graphics cards. I noticed that in 2021, I virtually saw no Galax RTX 30 series cards available across Australia. And so I actually haven't seen an X Gamer White come through on the shelves here in Australia but if I do see one, then I'll get back to you. But what I've seen with the RTX 30 series from Galax especially is I think in Australia, they've, they haven't they have been getting to the retail shelves. Because as we know beforehand, the miners were buying them all up out of the distribution chain before they could even get to the shelves. And with Galax cards, I think their value is some of the best. So if there is that crypto crash that comes sudden and hard, then I believe it's a personal belief that you'll see uh, suddenly a lot of Galax cards, RTX 30 series cards on the market. Though with this GTX 1070 right here, I have tested it on a PC. I have tried booting it up and it is indeed getting no signal. So generally what I do with graphics cards like this that have no signal, I will chuck them in the ultrasonic cleaner. Then I'll chuck them onto the dead GPU pile where if I get say 20 dead GPUs that pile up, I'll then go over all of them with a heat gun and see if any of them come back to life. But lately people have criticized me and said, look, don't put the heat gun on them, just sell them on eBay as uh, just faulty graphics cards. So I'm kind of tossing up in the air what to do with my busted GPU pile that's piling up right now. Uh, so, but let's give this a go on the ultrasonic cleaner. We'll detail uh, the settings I use on the ultrasonic cleaner. And I've also got some other cards that were busted that I've got sitting around outside this the Can Yes Fix It episode that we'll also chuck in the ultrasonic cleaner that aren't giving out a signal either. Yeah. 
So here we are now with the graphics cards right here. We've got the 1070, we've pulled off the cooler, but the cooler is very clean. So I'm not even gonna bother putting that in the ultrasonic cleaner, but what I think may have happened here is we can see here the thermal paste has creeped over the edge and it looks like it's in between some of these um, little uh, SMDs right here. So that could be shorting out and making the GPU not work. And if they did boot it up once, and they got a signal and then they try to restart it, it could have been because the thermal paste was creeping out because they had just recently cleaned the GPU up themselves. So we're gonna just chuck this in the ultrasonic cleanup, let it do its thing, clean off all this thermal paste, and then we're going to try, uh, see if we can get a signal off after we dry it all out and do that. But while we're at it, we've also got a GTX uh, 1050 Ti right here, and also a 1060 six gigabyte. These uh, both cards that are giving out no signal. So while I've got the ultrasonic cleaner running, I might as well see if I can get some of these other cards to work as well. Now, one thing about the ultrasonic cleaner is it is one of the best purchases I've made in a long time. This thing just simply cleans out all those parts and places that you just otherwise couldn't get to. And it'll just take you such a long time. This thing, yes, it does take around, I, I usually set it to 15 minutes when I start cleaning. But also on that note, there will be some added on time because you will have to dry off all the water and moisture out of the product. And then I do like to give it a later coat of uh, multi-purpose spray. So a lot of people like to say like, Brian, you should be using alcohol and you should be using this and that. I, I honestly, I have really good success with this and I just use tap water. Now tap water, of course, you wanna dry it all off because tap water is essentially not perfectly clean. So it will have conductive or capacitive elements in it if it's just tap water. And so make sure all the parts never put live electronics in tap water. I think that goes without saying, but make sure all your parts are drained as well and they've got no power in them before you drop them in the tap water. But tap water, it's cheap, it's effective, and it does the job. I also like to add in a little bit of detergent as well. I actually don't have any here. I'll just quickly go grab some. And then I like to set the ultrasonic cleaner on, as we said before, 15 minutes. And then I also uh, like to turn the heat up and really have a hot bath for these tech products. So after cleaning out the GTX 1070, we managed to get a signal, but we were straight away met with lines throughout the whole screen. And usually in my experience, this means that there's actually something faulty on the GPU and you have to replace that faulty part. So with lines on the screen, like we saw just then too, that usually to me indicates also there's VRAM issues. As core clocks, if they're faulty, usually you'll get some kind of like cut in cut out sort of behavior on top of weird random lines but usually lines all over the screen is vram issues so this card i think has faulty vram and we even tried not only reflashing the vbios to the original oc mini 10 series zotac card but i also got the zotac founders edition which is clocked lower and that didn't work either it just still displayed lines and it just said that it wasn't working now we also had a GTX 10 series funeral here where we had the 1050 Ti just gave out no signal at all, which is what it was doing before. We cleaned it up and this GTX 1060 was the same story. So <laughs> that's, uh, we were close on the 1070. We were close, but no cigar. Let's keep moving. So now this next one comes from Michael and they say, Dear Brian, I decided to build a new computer. I tried to find a new GSU uh, I think they mean GPU, but the prices have gotten uh, too expensed. So I decided to buy an AMD 3400G CPU and use the 11G to make my GPU. They had gotten expense for the 3400G in the USA. I ordered from eBay and it's coming from China. I plan on saving my money and getting an AMD 3600 with a good GPU. I bought a, a 450 American steel CPU and plan on using the AMD 
5800 CPU later in two years. And then they also sent a GPU along with it. And we've tried this GPU out. It's a 4670 and um, it's just giving out no signal and it's DDR3. So I mean, uh, this one, unfortunately with these cards, like I pull them out of like junk uh, PCs a lot. And so I've got a pile of old GPUs with no PCIe connectors and this one doesn't work at all So it's not worth putting in the ultrasonic cleaner even because the time you spend on a card like this I dare I'd even say the postage uh, Wasted on this card is probably not worth it unfortunately, but uh, thank you Michael for sending that one in But let's get on to the next one here, which comes from a another Michael and Michael number two says hi Brian tech yes city a long time viewer of your channel and love your content I have an ongoing back eight years almost now issues and suffer severe chronic back pain and I've been forced to give up my PC flipping days and as a result I have sent you the following stuff which I no longer need. At the end of the last year I sent you a whole heap of miscellaneous PC cables which I'm sure you would have already utilized in your PC build. So thank you so much and we'll interlude a little bit and just say back problems man that's uh, sad to hear about that and hopefully when you watch the content like this at Tech Yes City it's a good uh, pastime for you and uh, all the best with your back. I hope it does get better. Uh, personally, I had back issues when I was living in Japan and magnesium, chelated magnesium really helped with that for me personally. I mean, chronic back pain is probably a different story, but uh, let's continue on. Now I have posted you the following. I know they're worth a bit on eBay, but I figured I would support a local Aussie tech tuber who encouraged me to get into PC flipping and the X58, X79 builds. So, I love the X58 stuff and thanks so much for the stuff here, but they're saying the Gigabyte X58 UD7 motherboard, it's um, it's got a 5690 in it and 32 gigabytes of RAM and the triple channel memory slots are intermediate. Maybe faulty or just a thorough memory slot clean is needed. And then the ASUS Rampage uh, X79 motherboard also has a i7-3930K in it with 24 gigabytes of RAM and the motherboard has been a little bit iffy lately and sometimes posts and sometimes it doesn't. And then the DFI LAN party board is fully working. That's the old school DDR2 stuff. And there's some other parts in there as well with a snowman cooler. So if you want to please me, sending me over a snowman is definitely the way to do it. I love snowman coolers. Thanks for the thanks for the gifts. And uh, let's get onto these two motherboards which aren't working or have a little bit of problems with them. And we'll see if we can get them fully working. Now, before we even get into the motherboards, I can tell you straight away, a lot of the times with X58 and X79, and even a lot of motherboards, if memory slots are banging in and out, it's actually not the memory slots themselves. Sure, you can give them a little quick clean, and I do like to do that, but I actually find it's more so the pins on the motherboards having uh, what I like to refer to as micro bends. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna clean the pins on all three of these motherboards, actually two of the motherboards, and then we're just gonna start booting them up and seeing if we can get all the memory to work properly. And if it shows up as all working, then I should be pretty happy with that. And of course, a BIOS flash is usually in order, but uh, yeah, definitely we'll, we'll just clean those pins up now and show you what we do with these uh, older boards and see if we can bring some full 100% functional life back into them. So we've taken the CPUs out of both these boards and what we've got right here is the multi-purpose spray. Now this stuff is really good, non-conductive, non-capacitive, and I also find that it's really great for cleaning on the fly. So if you don't wanna wash anything or dry anything off and you want kind of immediate results, this stuff is great. As well as giving the finishing touches, I go on about how good this stuff is all the time. But we're gonna spray this in the memory slots and also on the CPU socket pins and then we're gonna clean them down with, what we've got right here is a very, um, I don't know how to measure brittleness, but this is a pretty soft brittle. And we're gonna use that to clean the pins. Then we're gonna clean out the RAM socket, or sockets with this right here, this brush. So just showing you how sort of brittle they are on camera. So if you wanna copy the tools I use, feel free to do so. So now with the pins, it's just a matter of just going against the grain softly and just cleaning them up and making sure that maybe if any of them have a slight micro bend, you will sort of bend it back into place. That's the thinking around bringing boards back and sort of having memory channels come back to life. And 
I've actually done this on quite a few, mainly X58 boards. You can see there's something in the corner there that may be causing this board to not be 100% functional. So we're just gonna go over this, just like so, give that a nice, just caressing it, just caressing it, like, like you would with any X58 or X79 motherboard. I mean, sometimes I even like to just caress the motherboards, even if they haven't got any problems. So we've got the X79 board up here straight away and the power switch just doesn't turn the build on at all, which means that there is something uh, seriously wrong with this X79 motherboard. Now we've tried different RAM, different RAM slots, even a different CPU. And so generally this means that um, there is an actual faulty part uh, stopping this from booting. Of course, we will try this later on anyhow without the heat sinks on and all that stuff. We'll try move it through the ultrasonic cleaner because there is another motherboard coming up that does look like it's got like a lot of worrisome dirt on it but uh, let's try the x58 board now which is the gigabyte ud7 and in the past since it's got a xeon in it i'm actually going to change the xeon for an i7 uh, 950 because in the past i've had a ud7 be problematic with xeons so we'll see if we can get that to boot get a signal and see if it's all up and running okay so after removing this heatsink, actually, before we even wash it, I'm trying to figure out what happened down at the south bridge here, or the chipset hub. It's absolutely filthy, and it looks like there's been some, maybe liquid metal applied to the, the chipset hub, which is absolutely bizarre. So I think perhaps a good wash and cleaning this up and then try it turning it on with no heatsink could solve this X79 motherboard's issues. So we're now booted up with the X58 motherboard and the pin cleaning definitely looks like it's solved this problem here with the uh, memory slots not recognizing all the memories. We can see here all those triple channels, they're working first go. We can uh, boot this up and down probably five more times. Just check if the um, RAM is still gonna be recognized each and every time. And of course, on top of that, we will flash the BIOS, but of course, this is working, we can move on now to the next problem. And <laughs> kind of happy, this is the first part so far in today's video that's working without a hiccup. So at least we got one successful part so far. So next up here, we've got a message from Bing and they sent over three motherboards. I only got two here, so I have no idea what happened to the third motherboard. Uh, but let's read the message and it says, Hi there, I wanted to thank you first off for the amount of creativity and effort it takes as a tech enthusiast to create these videos. Thank you for that. I have been an audience member since 2016 and as an American love building my own computers. My dad always tells me not to take the risk and buy a pre-built desktop or laptop instead, which has warranty if anything goes wrong. However, there's nothing that replaces the experience and customization that custom computer parts give in comparison. I always love learning about technology and what keeps this hobby alive is video article creators like you. These motherboards I have given are not working. I have had issues giving them life due to either something on the board that just lost hope or simply it's on its way out. The Maximus 8 formula, for example, one day stopped posting, then the lights went out in late 2019. The Omen board was actually having issues, so I stopped into Micro Center and had them do a diagnosis. They told me that this was scratched. After looking at the board, I noticed a thermal paste line, not a scratch, which makes me have hope. Lastly, the Gigabyte board was having some issues after posting a BIOS update instability, but it certainly wasn't bricked and the GPU was just dead. So I think the Gigabyte board, I must have had it in another pile and I tested it out and started, uh, I re -flat. I think it ended up working in the end. That's I, off the top of my memory, I think that's what happened to it. So again, I've been so confused with these boards and what's uh, the stuff that's been piling up here. But um, the the, uh, the Omen looks indeed like you've suspected. It's got the thermal paste going through it. So we're gonna clean all that off. We're also gonna check out the pins and of course, just throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner because we're throwing that Azus motherboard in there, that X79. And we're also gonna just, I guess while we're at it, we might as well 
chuck in this uh, Maximus 8 formula, give them all a nice tidy clean and see if they can work. But while we're on that note, before we chuck those in the ultrasonic cleaner, we do have another message here. Since I actually don't have any ninth gen CPUs on hand, um, this is actually ironic because uh, Fabio sent in a 9600K, which I just dropped on the floor, and there's a Xeon W2140B. So these two CPUs, uh, this is what the message reads. It says, Dear Brian, you're welcome to read the letter in one of your Can Yes Fix It episodes. I'm a Swiss fellow who's been watching your channel ever since the $40 junk PC. At this time, I've already been many years into the used PC market, refurbishing trash PCs for the local market and building PCs as a hobby side income as a trainee electrician. Over all these years, my hobby evolved into a freelance side job that generates a nice supplemental income, developing new ways and metas as you'd call them, and that's it, that's the tech yes meta. Fixing broken parts and tweaking hardware to the max performance contributed to my deep knowledge in PC hardware, but it also can be seen as a sort of lifestyle where you just don't go out and buy the best and most expensive thing. Creating great value, searching for alternative ways and trying to get the most out of something you already own are skills everyone could benefit from. And yeah, not just in tech, right? Could any, anyone in society in any different field can benefit from that when you're providing value then you're allowing uh, resources to be allocated to innovation. That's the whole, I guess, principle, uh, I guess an augmented benefit of doing what we do. Uh, but after my apprenticeship, I joined university and continued working in the PC building market. I must say it fulfilled me with pride. Today I'm a teacher at secondary school and I can't see myself quitting the used PC market. There's just something to it, something very, very special, some tech yes kind of thing. And I completely agree. It is. Used parts is where it's at, right? I love doing used parts. Of course, we check out the new stuff, but that's mainly just to see how much the used stuff can come down in price or if you should put pressure on the used market with the new stuff. And of course, to see how fast stuff has come. Uh, anyway, I could go on forever, me too. I just wanted to say thank you. Your videos have been accompanying me through many years now and I've collected many great memories that are connected to some of your content and the things I was working on at this period of time. I especially enjoy watching the recording of your streams. And that's, that's another thing. Once, uh, once my mojo officially comes back, we'll be streaming more regularly. I'm still, I have to see my son before that mojo comes back. I think I just need that energy back. I need that passion back. I need to know life's all good. So uh, there are two CPUs in this envelope. Uh, one is an i5-9600K that I couldn't get to work. The other one is a Socket 2066 Xeon W2140B, which I wanted to use in an X299 motherboard, but it wasn't compatible with it. It is an 8, 16, 8, 8 core 16 threaded CPU, and I know how much you love these Xeons. Australia has been on my bucket list forever, and I'm planning to visit your country in a few years for a longer period of time. I'd love to invite you on for dinner and having a chat. By the way, Switzerland has a very healthy and rather big used market. Keep up the good work. Cheers, Fabio. Thanks for the lovely message, Fabio. It's awesome that you have been getting into PC parts, and we've just got this community around, uh, especially around Tech S City here, where we just it's constant, just on the grind, on the hustle, and getting things done. And so, uh, this this just brought a big smile to my face. I love reading these messages from you guys, and love hearing your stories. And definitely, if you're in Australia, definitely come on down and um, come to the Gold Coast, and just tell me you're at the Gold Coast, and we'll meet up. We'll have a brewski. There's some good local beers here. There's also some pretty awesome food. So. Definitely message me if you are coming to Australia and be happy to help. That aside, we've got the 9600K, which we are going to test with the uh, busted omen board. And we're going to <laughs> busted, bust, busted. It sometimes works just like it did in the uh, $100 flip up challenge. Let's uh, start cleaning these motherboards and then we will start testing. Houston, we have a problem. Uh, so as we're undoing this. Um, formula here this maximus formula i can tell you as someone who used to live with cats i'm 99 percent certain that a cat has done his thing on this board and <laughs> it just it has that unique distinct smell so hopefully the ultrasonic clean does indeed give this board some life so maybe why if you've got a um because the board's pretty clean it looks like it's really good condition so and usually if nothing's coming on at all it might be something short circuiting so got my fingers crossed on some of these Zeus boards hopefully we can bring them back to life
So now we've come back after cleaning those three boards. We gave them some of the best tech yes loving possible, but all three of them, just no power, absolutely nothing. They would not switch on the Maximus Formula 8. That did sound like it tried to switch on, but then it cut out. So you're at this stage where I know some people will be like, well, why don't you try to reflash the BIOS? And trust me, you can boot up a PC without a BIOS in it. It should start still and the fans just go full speed. So the problem doesn't even lie on these three motherboards with the BIOS. There's no point wasting my time trying to reflash something that doesn't even turn on. So we're at this stage where these boards, those three boards that we just try to turn on, there's something drastically wrong with them from the get go. Something's faulty on those boards. Either something's blown out or in the case of the two boards um, from Bing, I think the, those boards the, the cat probably did his thing and then they <laughs> they just don't work anymore. So we got one more box here to unbox, which comes from uh, Kevin. He didn't leave a letter, but we're just gonna have a look what's inside and then we'll come back with a conclusion. All right, so we have here an Asus X58 motherboard. We will just try and boot this X58 motherboard up and maybe leave this can yes fix it on a good note? So this one, uh, it looked really clean and uh, we booted it up first going to work. So I think maybe Kevin is a Jedi master and he could foresee the conclusion of this can yes fix and he's like, look, <laughs> I'll just send you a board in and with an X5670 and it just works. So, whew, all right, we can close this one up. And there we have it, absolute failure. Well, except for one part, and that was the X58 motherboard where preemptively I knew how to fix that because I've seen that problem before with memory channels closing out. And so cleaning out the pins and then cleaning out the sockets we had all three channels showing up on that board, but in terms of the graphics cards, there's really nothing you can do, especially in the case of the GTX 1070. I mean, we at least got a signal out of it because we cleaned it up and I don't know, cleaning it up can help save a lot of parts, but in this case, there was something awfully wrong with that graphics card. The other two cards I've been, I mean, I knew they didn't work properly before I even started cleaning them, but they were different to can yes fix it. Uh, but the other motherboards, we had three boards in a row, like the X79 Rampage, that really, when I pulled that heatsink off the south bridge, I knew there was a solid chance that the board was toast. And so that's what it looked like with the X79. I mean, something actually fried and it wouldn't work anymore. And in terms of those other two boards, I mean, you could just smell that a cat was having a lot of fun with those, those motherboards. So they were pretty much, I'm pretty sure they were fried as well, but at least in the case of the Maximus formula, we, we at least got the LEDs to turn back on as opposed to them in the letter, they said that nothing, you know, what the, le the LEDs weren't even turning on anymore. So that was good to see that we sort of got somewhere with that, somewhere with the GTX 1070. But after that, if you want to spend more time fixing these parts or trying to get them to work, then you do have to go down the rabbit hole, in my opinion, of actually replacing and testing out which part is faulty on the motherboard, where's the actual fault occurring, and then soldering on a new part. And so I know if I go down that route, it's gonna take a lot of time. And in fact, I would actually, I'm waiting for travel to resume again, so I can go meet someone, actually there's a viewer who's very good at this stuff and they've offered to train me up very quickly. And so if someone else has got a lot of hands-on experience, they can just give me the list of all the parts, what, you know, what, basically they can give me the whole replacing SMDs and replacing parts on motherboards hot list. And then I can go from there because if I want to learn it myself, I'm going to be going down this whole route of just making so many mistakes that I could easily skip if someone else out there is really knowledgeable in that field. And that's one thing where I know there's, um, there's a few tech channels that do that and they're very in-depth and niche and they're very hardcore. What I do here at Tech yes City is sort of I go through the basics and quickly run through a heap of parts, do the cleaning methods, and then also try different things that I feel could get the parts to work. And usually a lot of the times, I mean, I'm guessing a lot of the stuff coming in now is just 
parts from you guys where you've tried all the tech yes stuff and it's like well i'll send it the tech yes and he can try it again <laughs> and it just ends up sort of not working anyway but um because i mean i've noticed a trend with the ken yes fix it series at the start we had a lot of success and it's slowly getting to now we're hitting rock bottom where all the stuff getting sent in a lot of it's just pretty much toast so um, that's interesting to see that trend happening, which I'm happy because it means that you guys are fixing the parts and you're getting use out of them. Though, of course, if you've got PC parts that you can't get working, you want to see me have a go at them, especially bent pins. I didn't have any bent pins today. I love fixing bent pins. If you've got that kind of stuff, then I'll put the PO box in the description below. Though we'll say lastly, thanks for all the lovely letters that you guys send in and all the support you give us at Tech yes City. Hope you guys had a bit of fun with today's uh, Can Yes Fix It episode. But also when it comes to cleaning, some people in the comments say like, why do I, uh, say for instance, I've cleaned the GPU up, I've done spent a lot of time and then I rub the bottom of my shirt uh, on and quickly rub the GPU die down. That's just because what I do is I put the multi-purpose spray on and that's um, a little bit greasy. And so that's not great for thermal conductivity. So quickly rubbing off that off the GPU die and also off the back of the cooler saves me time and then I can put the fresh thermal paste on and that works every time. Of course, if you've got like a, a shirt with a lot of dirt and grain on it, then, then don't rub the die down because you'll end up scratch, you could scratch the die and that'll of course brick your um, particular PC part, but don't do that. But these shirts, you know, tech, yes. I'm, I'm Even though we get our hands dirty, I still, am hygienic i like i do place hygiene uh, up the top of the priority list even though the pc parts can get pretty filthy around here though uh, what we saw here today was even though we taste a lot of failure i still enjoy it i still like it and uh, going through it all it's a lot of fun so thanks for tuning in though lastly i will say i do apologize once again for the delay on this can yes fix it episode and i do like really sorry if if you guys sent something in and I've misplaced it and I couldn't find the letter anymore or I lost the part, I, it's just been a, 2021 was just a real bad year for me personally, but we're, we're getting, 2022 is looking like it's getting better. And there's also uh, people like, for instance, Michael sent in another letter as well. Thank you so much. And he's, um, he's sort of, he's been following the channel. So thank you for the support and um, thank each and every one of you guys again, just for the support. I really do enjoy Doing this stuff, it's sort of kept me going, I think, from totally breaking down because tech itself has always been one avenue where I could just take my mind off of stuff and just start doing use enthusiast tech stuff. And it's sort of been that avenue instead of breaking down and, and getting down. It's just been like, okay, there's all this crap going on. I'm just going to go get some used PC parts and just go clean stuff and put together a used build. So it's always been just a fantastic avenue. And I feel like you guys, if you guys do the same thing, it's a great avenue for you guys to just get your mind off of things and really enjoy yourself. It's, it sounds weird, right? Cleaning filthy used PC parts is enjoyable. That's a, uh, that's just how it goes sometimes. Anyway, guys, that's all for today. If you guys enjoyed this one, then be sure to hit that like button. Also let us know, in the comments section below if there was anything else you would try with some of these PC parts. I mean, I can get the heat gun going on the GPUs and I do have the pile of used dead GPUs stacking up. It's actually getting <laughs> quite big now. Uh, so, I mean, I was waiting to go to Taiwan and bring especially all the more expensive cards over there where they charge about $30, I think, a fix. So you can get, say for instance, a 1080 Ti, get that working again for like 30 bucks. That'd be fantastic. So. I'm waiting to bring some of those over to Taiwan. And then of course the ones that come back and they can't fix, then we'll give them the heat gun or we'll put them on eBay as faulty GPUs. But uh, do let us know if there's anything else you would do. Love reading those thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Cordell. And they ask, why not spend the extra $90 and get rid of the SE slow SATA SSD and get a proper NVMe SSD Samsung Pro 500 gigabyte if you're going to run all that? No hate, I love your channel and what you do, but it's something you may wish, may as well just do. So they're referring to our build that we did yesterday with the RTX 2080 Super and the 240 gig SSD and the two terabyte hard drive. And that's where it comes down to the extra $90. Uh, a lot of people don't have the extra $90 just to go and blow on an extra SSD. And for instance, that 2080 Super build, that was, I've already sold that, that's already gone. So that's how quick some of my builds move. 
because you, you may not think it, but sometimes a hundred dollars, especially when you're selling a PC, that can be the difference between a sale and not a sale. And a lot of people just look at the GPU because they don't really care too much about storage. They'll probably play one or two games and a 240 gigabyte SSD is gonna be absolutely fine for that. And then of course, if they've got a lot of different games that they install and they sometimes play, then a two terabyte hard drive is gonna be perfectly fine for that too, especially if it's brand new. So it just, it's about different strokes for different folks. Uh, me personally, I would probably spend a bit of extra money and grab a one terabyte budget M.2. I think they're a really good price right now. That's what I probably do. I even said that in the video. If you got a little bit more money, go for a dedicated bigger SSD. But in terms of what people uh, demand and what they want, everyone's got different choices. Of course, the higher the price you go, the better the stuff you're going to get. But I like to give you guys options and that's why I said in the video. So uh, yeah, I mean, would you go with the Samsung Pro? If you're video editing, definitely. If you're just gaming, I don't think there's a big need for a Samsung Pro. Hope that answers that question. And with that aside, I'll catch you guys in the next one. If you stayed this far, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell to get the videos as soon as they drop. And with that aside, peace out for now. Bye.